In this video, we discuss Niels Bohr explanation for the hydrogen atom emission spectrum. Okay, so uh, Planck and Einstein and de Broglie had already laid out uh, uh, the rudiments of quantum theory. Okay, there was one experiment that they still could not explain, and that is uh, uh, the emission spectrum for the hydrogen atom. Okay, so the experiment is as follows. You have uh, hydrogen gas in a uh, bulb, and then what you do is you apply a large electric discharge to the hydrogen atom, and what that does is it breaks apart some of the H2 molecules to generate hydrogen atoms. And then what happens is that those hydrogen atoms uh, uh, are excited. Okay? And a way to uh, lose that excitation is to actually emit electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so photons come out of these uh, excited gas, the hydrogen atoms, Okay, but something that is very interesting about those photons that come out is that uh, the wavelengths that you record for the pho photons are actually very specific. Okay, so for example, if you look at the visible region of the spectrum, okay, there is a line here at 656 nanometers, which is in the orange, okay, and there are some other lines in the blue, there are some other lines uh, in the uh, indigo, another line here in the violet, for example, the line in the blue is about uh, 482 nanometers. Okay? And there's no other lines in the visible, there's only those four. Okay, uh, nothing in between, nothing there. And this is very shocking because if you say take white light and, and pass it through a prism, you actually get all of the possible wavelengths well separated. But in the case of the hydrogen atom, uh, you actually only get these very specific wavelengths. And this is something that people did not understand. The question is, well, how do we explain this, right? So, so Niels Bohr uh, then decided to apply quantization to uh, the possible orbits that an electron can have in the hydrogen atom. Okay, so this is the explanation for that experiment. Uh, think about a hydrogen atom uh, in which you just have the nucleus with one proton, and then the electron is in the periphery. All right, so, so what Bohr uh, uh, thought is that, well, the electron is orbiting around the nucleus in a circular orbit, okay, but it turns out that uh, you can't uh, obtain those uh, uh, results unless the orbits that the electron can have have very well, very well defined radii, okay? So those orbits are very specific. The, the electron can't be anywhere in space, but is restricted to some orbits, okay? So for example, this would be uh, the first orbit, okay, which we can call one, that would be the second orbit, which we can call two, then third, and so forth. Okay, and there's ma many of them. There's, there will be, in principle, uh, a large number of orbits. Right. So the idea then is that uh, again the uh, orbits are very well, very well defined. Okay, they can have this radii and not other. And what happens then is that well, if the radii are very well uh, uh, defined, then the energies of those orbits are also very well defined. Okay, notice that. Here you have an electron, which is a negatively charged particle, and that is being attracted by a positively charged nucleus, right? So uh, depending on the separation uh, of those two particles, you will have a very specific energy, right? So again, each of these one orbits correspond to very, very specific energies, which in turn means that the energy of the electron in the hydrogen atom is quantized, okay? So this concept of energy quantization has, had already emerged uh, with Planck's uh, study of the black body radiation, but notice that Planck uh, was uh, indicating that the energy of uh, emitted radiation was quantized. In this case, we actually have the energy not of electromag electromagnetic radiation, but the energy of a particle of an electron that is quantized, and that is an important difference. Okay? Now, the question is, well, what are the energies of these orbits, and then uh, how do we explain that you actually have uh, that bubble right there. Well, the explanation of those uh, uh, wavelengths is very, uh, is very simple according to this model, right? So again, when you discharge this uh, hydrogen gas and generate hydrogen atoms, those hydrogen atoms are excited. And what that means is that the electron is going to be uh, not in the uh, uh, most favorable situation, which will be the first uh, orbit. This is what we call the ground state. But the electron can be in the ground state and also in other orbits that require more energy. Okay, for example, in orbit two, three, four, five, and so forth. Right. So let's suppose that the uh, electron is in orbit three. 
Okay, the electron can uh, get rid of excess energy by hopping to two, which is an orbit that requires less, ener less, less energy, and the loss in energy that the electron experiences during this transition, that is emitted as a photon of a very particular wavelength. Okay, so the key here in this theory is that uh, the change in energy experienced by uh, that electron, okay, from an initial state to a final state or orbit, is going to be equal to the energy of the photon. Okay, and that is a very important expression, which is the basis of every single type of spectroscopy uh, that we know from that point on. Okay. So uh, then in that case, let's actually then talk about a little bit about what the energy of those orbits is. Okay, so essentially what Bohr did is just uh, uh, try to calculate all possible transitions here, from here to there, then from here to there. There's another photon emitted. Notice that this photon that you have right here would have from three to one, right? Uh, uh, that would have a much higher energy than the photon that you observe when the electron hops from three to two. Okay, so the idea then was to get all of these possible transitions and then fit them uh, uh, to the experimental spectrum so that you can get reasonable uh, energy levels for the orbits. Okay, and the expression that Bohr found is this. The energy of those orbits, and the orbits are going to be uh, characterized by uh, a number n, so that would be n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, is equal to minus a constant, okay, a, and then multiplied by z squared over n squared, and again, n is this uh, quantum number that tells you uh, what orbit you're in, and that can only be an integer. So 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Okay, that is a quantum number. Now, z is what we call uh, uh, the nuclear charge. Okay, so that will be the charge that you have at the nucleus, and of course, for the hydrogen atom, you only have one proton, so that means that the z has to be one for the hydrogen atom. If this was, for example, uh, the helium plus atom, okay, helium uh, uh, has two electrons uh, in the nucleus, you have two protons, right? But if you have a helium plus ion, then there's only one electron, and in that, uh, in that regard, it's, this is very similar to the hydrogen atom. The only difference that in the nucleus, uh, uh, you have two protons, right? So that uh, number would be z is equal to two for the nuclear charge of that uh, atom. And then a is simply a constant, Okay, which is equal to 2.178, 10 to the minus 18 joules. Okay, and that uh, number fits the spectrum quite well. All right, first of all, uh, uh, we actually have to say here, why do you have a negative sign right there? Okay, why are the energies of the electron negative? Right, all of these numbers are positive, that is a positive number, here you have a negative number. Well, the important thing here is that uh, when the electron is infinitely separated from the nucleus, right, so uh, the, the separation is infinite and the nucleus and the electron are not interacting, then there's, we can say that the energy of, of that pair is zero. Okay, but as the electron comes uh, close to the nucleus and gets into one of these orbits, then there's actually an attraction between the electron and the proton. That attraction is stabilizing, and what that means is that the energy falls, it drops. Right, so you start with energy zero, and the energy only goes down through a stabilization, then this energy has to be negative. Okay, so that is uh, uh, the origin of this negative sign. Notice that uh, uh, the smaller this number is, right, so for one, which is the smallest number that you can have, this will be the most negative energy that you can have, and what that means is that the attraction uh, between the electron and the nucleus is the highest that you can have, right? So the electron in this uh, particular orbit, in n is equal to one, is the largest that you can have. All right, so what then we were going to, what we're going to do next is now that we understand uh, what the origin origin of the uh, electromagnetic radiation these photons is, and what the energy of the states uh, of the electron are, uh, what those energies are, then we can actually uh, try to see if uh, we recover some of the experimental lines that we observe in the spectrum. All right, so let's use what we just learned to calculate what would be uh, the wavelength that you observe from the transition of the electron from orbit three to orbit two. Okay, so let's see if we can do that right here. All right, so uh, we know that uh, we're trying to calculate here the difference in energy between uh, uh, orbits three and two, okay? And this has to be equal to the energy of the photon that you emit, which is the same thing as hc over lambda 
and then this lambda uh, is what we can get from the spectrum right here. Okay, so from uh, orbit 3 to 2. Well, uh, the change in energy would be uh, energy of the final state, which is n is equal to 2, minus the energy of the initial state, which is n is equal to 3. This has to be equal to uh, hc over lambda. Okay? But now we actually have uh, what the energies of those uh, states are. Okay, notice that if we uh, take again uh, the energy uh, of the uh, uh, electron in the hydrogen atom by Bohr, okay, this will be equal to minus A, and then C squared, which in the case of the hydrogen atom is 1 squared over 2 squared, minus minus A, and then 1 squared over 3 squared. Okay, and this has to be equal to HC over lambda. Okay? All right, so uh, uh, we can then solve here, but something uh, uh, important happens uh, right here. Notice that as you go from 3 to 2, right, the energy becomes more negative. Okay, so this change in energy that you have calculated right here is going to be a negative number. And what that means is that then the energy of the photon would be a negative energy, which makes no sense at all. Okay, we can do it again here. Because uh, your energy is, is becoming more negative, Right? This change in energy is actually negative right here. What that would mean is that the energy of the photon is negative, and that makes no physical sense at all. Okay, so the way to reconcile this is to simply calculate the absolute value, and then uh, what we say is that, again, the energy that is lost as the electron hops from a high orbit to a lower orbit that is uh, uh, invested in uh, emitting a, a photon that has a particular energy h nu. Okay, so we simply have to take here the absolute value. Okay, so you can punch in the numbers right there. Uh, and again, this A happens to be equal to uh, 2.178, 10 to the minus 18 joules. Okay, and with those numbers, then what you get is that this lambda happens to be equal to 7.57 uh, nanometers. Okay? which is exactly this orange line that we have right here, this line in the Earth's spectrum. The only difference is in this last significant figure, and that has to do with uh, the precision that we use for these constants right here. Okay, we only have three significant figures in this particular, uh, uh, if, you, if you use, for example, C equal 3.00 10 to the 8 meters per second, which is what I have used, right? There's only uh, three significant figures right there, which means that this last one can change by a little bit. But in essence, if you actually use all of the significant, significant figures, you get exactly uh, the same line as the spectrum. And as a matter of fact, you actually get all of the lines uh, if you calculate the transitions between all of the levels. Okay, so uh, uh, what this means is that uh, Bohr's model, uh, atom model actually works very well to explain uh, uh, the experimental spectrum of uh, uh, the hydrogen atom. Okay, this is just a part of the spectrum. Okay, and actually the lines in the visible, they all come from orbits, for transition uh, between orbits that end up in two, right? So this line is the line from uh, three to two, that is the line from four to two, here you have a line of uh, orbit five to orbit two, again the ones in the visible are those that end up in uh, the second state. But there are other uh, lines that appear in the ultraviolet that are responsible for the transitions that end up in one, and again, we no normally don't, don't observe those unless you actually have the detector that works in the ultraviolet. The visible, the visible ones, again, correspond to transitions that end up in this second orbit. Okay? Uh, all right, so uh, then uh, uh, Bohr's uh, hydrogen atom model actually works very well, and it gets some things that are, are correct. Okay? And the, uh, the things that is correct is that, well, uh, this equation for the energy is actually uh, correct. That is, that is absolutely true. Uh, those are the energies of the electron uh, in the uh, hydrogen atom. This is all also true. And actually, again, this is the fundamental equation in any spectroscopic technique uh, uh, that is used today. That is still true. The difference in energy between two states in matter is identical to the energy of the photon that is able to bridge those two states. Uh, uh, that is also correct. But there are some things that the uh, model gets wrong. And uh, one of them, uh, which is very important, is that the Bohr assumes that the uh, orbits of this electron are circular. We will say, uh, we will see later on that actually this is not true. The electron does not move in an orbit, uh, uh, and, and we'll, we'll have to pay a lot of attention 
uh, to see exactly what is the motion of the electron in the hydrogen atom, but again, it's not an, a circular orbit at all. Okay? The other thing that the uh, uh, method gets wrong is that this equation can only be applied to the hydrogen atom or hydrogenic atoms, right? So atoms that only have one electron, like the helium uh, plus atom, the lithium two plus ion, and so forth. Okay, but if you want to apply this to, say, copper or iron, then the method fails and you, you don't reproduce the experiments. Okay, so again, uh, uh, what this means is that, well, some of the uh, uh, concepts in uh, the Bohr model are correct, and we're going to be using them uh, later on. So this depends our understanding of how matter is, but some concepts are not, are not right. Okay, so what that means is that we actually need a better model, a better theory, uh, to be able to explain uh, exactly what Bohr got wrong. Okay, and that's what we're going to be doing in the next videos. But we will be introducing the Schrodinger equation, which is the ultimate way to treat uh, electrons in matter.